Welcome to the Notion Club, guys. Uh, I am Mariah, and with me is Muskego Brown. Hi. Um, today we're going to be... <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> today we're going to be actually uh, going through Muskego's article, uh, Music is a Drug and You Should Take It. Um, but first, I actually kind of wanted to go over a David Bowie uh, conspiracy with oh. you, Ethan, because I think you'll I think you'll like where it's going. So prime, prime. So yeah, uh, hope everyone is doing well. Miss Gigo, how are you today? <laughs> <laughs> I am doing great. Um, <laughs> it's it's hot in the Midwest right now, and so it's uh, mm. it's welcome, but it's also uh, awfully sweaty too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the heat? I do. I do. Because I remember on Ilan Vital, you were talking to Josh and you were just like, I hate the heat. Um, but maybe that was like the more extreme the, heat that yeah, you were talking like, about. Yeah, like talking about like the, the hot yoga. That sounds miserable to me. But, you know, like a hot day, <laughs> there's, you can take your shirt off and enjoy the breeze. Have a good time. Mm. Yeah. Well, at least for men in this country, you can take your shirt off. <laughs> but we won't get into but that. <laughs> someday we'll free the nipple as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not on either side of the argument. I just like to be... I like to poke the bear for some people. <laughs> like she said, what? <laughs> ah, goodness. All right. Um, so basically, I wanted to tell you about a uh, conspiracy that I found today, actually. So bear with me. It's a little it's going to be um, we're going to be treading rough waters just because I, I literally learned about this conspiracy today. OK, um, but it is called and tell me if you know this already. I mean, I'll, I'll continue talking and whatnot, but um, it's called David Bowie predicts the rise of Kanye West. <laughs> yes, yes, I am aware of this. Do conspiracy. you know about this? I'm, I'm aware of it. Oh I don't gosh. know a lot about it, but I, I did read a, I believe, a Rolling Stone article once. Did yeah. A story. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But refresh my memory because I do not remember how it goes. Okay, so basically the story goes, um, David Bowie's 1972 album titled The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Yes. Um, the On the actual album cover, there's a fluorescent sign that says K West. And like that's kind of um, what your eye is drawn to besides like David Bowie's like alter ego, which is Ziggy Stardust, mm -hmm. um, which is right below it. Um, so that was one of that, like, that's a part of the conspiracy, um, in the actual album, um, the first track is called five years, which predicts the end of the world, unless a star, uh, man comes to like the earth and, um, saves us all. Yes. And then literally five years from this album dropping, Kanye West is born. Um, <laughs> uh, the only difference is, is I think the album dropped on the 6th of June in 1972, and then, uh, Kanye West was actually born on June 8th. So there is a, a five year and two day difference. So I don't know if that like matters or not, but it is interesting. We'll go I mean, with it. We'll go with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then Bowie's final album is titled Black Star. Allegedly, yes. this confirms that West is is like his chosen successor. Yes. Um, and on this actual like title track, he actually was singing. Um, the lyrics go: "Something happened on the day he died. Spirit rose a meter and stepped aside. Somebody else took his place and uh, bravely cried, 'I'm a black star.'" Um, I mean, if you think about it, That's Kanye's Kanye. literally a black star. That's Kanye. <laughs> He's always preaching it. Uh-huh. Um, there was this one, uh, hold on, let me, let me. Yeah, I'm a fan of this conspiracy. <laughs> to me, Bowie and Kanye were, were doing the same thing. They were innovating pop mm. music in like completely yeah. different ways. Nobody had ever heard anything like David Bowie. And Kanye, like no one's ever heard some of the shit that he's doing. They're they're both amazing in in 
their own way yet very similar ways mm -hmm. um there is something i don't remember if it was in a specific article article or if it was like uh part of his lyrics somewhere but basically david bowie was talking about his alter ego and his what he said was as soon as ziggy dies on stage the infinites take his clements and make themselves visible um so i was like oh maybe he died on stage <laughs> let's see <laughs> no he didn't he <laughs> 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 which i know that's like terribly morbid but i was like Ooh, let's see how this aligns um basically david bowie passed away on january 10th after his battle with uh cancer his family said that he did die peacefully um but here's another part of the conspiracy kanye west was actually one of the first artists to commemorate him after like one hour when mm. the official uh announcement came about his death like Kanye was the first person and it was literally within like it, it's just kind of like I don't know it's like hmm maybe <laughs> he felt his spirit his his spirit pass yeah exactly yeah. like if Bowie chose like if Bowie predicted this like next person coming and um filling his like um seat if you will yeah, like that yeah. would make sense that Kanye Perhaps would be the one to be like even willed Kanye into existence <laughs> mm. Mm. that's an interesting thing but basically um on his last album uh one of the first tracks we had already gone on to the um uh we'd all i already read over those lyrics but the third song on his um on his album is called lazarus and, it, you know, I'm sure most people are familiar with, like, the Lazarus uh, story from the Bible where Jesus raised Lazarus back from the dead. Um, Created a zombie. Here's, here's, here's the strange one. This is a, a far-reaching one, but it's still kind of like, hmm, makes you wonder. Um, on uh, Kanye's Jesus album, he, he states, I am a god. And then, um, obviously, like, Jesus brings Lazarus back to life. And if you think about it, if Kanye was the one to come, then he would, like, fulfill Ziggy's, like, place, but also he would keep him alive in, like, spirit. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, hmm. it's a, far, it's a far one, but, like, it, it's <laughs> reaching. It's reaching. But I still, like, wanted to include it. <laughs> That's um, good. And then also, here's another part of that, like, far-reaching, like, part of the conspiracy. In 2006, Kanye was pictured in the Rolling Stones with a crown of thorns on his head. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I th that, that was, I, if I remember correctly, <laughs> Kanye going along with his whole I am a god thing. Um, uh-huh, his Jesus album. Yes, yes. But if if Ziggy Star is Lazarus, then it would make sense that Kanye was like yeah, figuratively okay. yeah, Jesus. Yeah, he's, he's resurrecting the spirit of of David Bowie. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what see what's happening there. Yes, <laughs> yes. I I am a fan of this conspiracy. <laughs> I thought you might be. Um, I was actually like prepping for your article and like what questions to ask. And I was, like, searching YouTube, like, is, this is going to sound really dumb, but basically my search was, is music magic or is music math? <laughs> 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 and I was just trying to find any video that came up, and I was getting some really weird, um, some really weird, like, um, I don't know, uh, search results. Yeah. And then I saw this, like, one, and I was like, oh, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I probably could have done a lot better uh, job with some of the questions that I'll be asking you today, but I figured it was worth it. I thought, <clears throat> yeah, no, with what, your love what, of Kanye. What better, yeah, what better way to introduce the notion that music might be magic than to talk about Kanye West? Right? I thought you would like that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, watching it, it all <laughs> sounds like bullcrap. <laughs> but, well, um, <laughs> yeah yeah of course it does but 
honestly, like, I'm a fan of it, too. Like, eh. <laughs> You ain't gonna convince me it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I realize this is a, a real flaw in my thinking, but a lot of times I do hear things like this, and I even say this in, in my article, but sometimes the truth is just too boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes, dude. I mean, I, I know that does not have any weight on what is actually true, but it's mm. it's certainly more fun to go along with things like this. Yes, yes. <laughs> I would definitely agree. Or you could consider our perception of truth and reality boring. And maybe it's actually interesting. We're the boring ones. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever considered that? Well, I mean, I, I think we'll, we'll probably get into this once we get into the article here. But, uh, yeah, I just the notion that music is just mathematical and there's nothing spiritual about it that's i don't know i think that's a boring idea it's certainly hmm. more fun to think that music is magic yeah well i definitely cannot wait to get into it um i am gonna ask you so this morning i put up on notion club social media um if i just asked if anyone had any questions about your articles um, we did get a, a few questions. Um, oh, so would you like to go over those questions first or do you want me to just kind of tie it into um, my questions? I will let or you. Or do you want to wait for those questions to be last? I'll let you decide how, however you want to tackle this. Okay. Um, I may wait a little bit then on the other questions. Okay. Um, just because they are good, but I think it would be better if they came up later in the conversation. So, sure. um, yeah, I guess without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So music is a drug and you should take it. That is the title of your article. Um, in the opening of this piece, you say that music colors our conscious experience. Can you expound upon that for me? <laughs> like, what sure. does a coloring of your conscious experience look like to you? Um, like, how can you break that down? So, I mean, imagine that you're you're sitting in your living room and it's silent. In a way, the mm. silence is like a blank slate. It's a white sheet of paper. And then all of a sudden, you turn on some rock and roll. Now, your entire conscious experience is just different. It's there's there's now a whole new dynamic that you know if your music is loud enough it can't be ignored and hmm. it uh you know you turn on the right tune and before you even realizing it your body's moving to it um so i don't know i, I think that's, yeah yeah that's <laughs> i think what i mean by coloring our conscious experience okay um i definitely loved that you included the definition of drug in your article um I think that it really helps explain your argument a little bit more just because I think if you would have uh, just put in drug, it would have like probably confused yeah, a few yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought about leaving it out, but I, I kind of wound up agreeing with what you just said there. Yeah, it's it's for, for clarity's sake and to not immediately lose my reader. Um, yeah, exactly. Put that in there. Um, it is true that music can alter your mood. I know that there have been numerous times in which I knew I needed, like, a good cry or a hype song right before I, like, went out <laughs> and I was not feeling it. Yeah. Um, specific music definitely helped alter my mood. Um, so, I guess now would actually be a really good time for the questions that we got because I think it would help with clarification. So okay. let me pull those up real okay. fast. Um, <clears throat> what defines music? That's the first question we have. Oh, that's a good question. Right? Yeah. Um, gee, I don't even know that I have a good answer to that. I mean... <laughs> Some, I mean, I, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, avant-garde music. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know plenty of people who <laughs> would not call that music. Um, mm. But at the end of the day, I, I, I can't 
stand on some pedestal and declare something to not be music just because I don't get it. Um, oh, yeah. And so, I mean, those same people will call birds chirping music. Um, That's true. Bird perhaps, song. Perhaps not. Some people might not even say that that is, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe, like, at its core, it's just sound in time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what music is, and um, it's up to the listener to decide if it's, you know, worth capturing or repeating, um, or given that title of music. But um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I'm in a position to call any any sound in time not music. Hmm. What do you think? So it is? actually, I was gonna be. Oh, well, I just want to ask this real fast. I okay. was going to be a little controversial okay. and ask you if there was any specific musical genres that you would exclude from the world of music. Country music. <laughs> Country music. I just, oh, okay, I just, so well, you do, I, you I just do call the music to think. Uh-huh. No, I, honestly, I... That, but you also... <laughs> that I don't mean but that. You also... it, obviously, it is music, but I just, I mean, I, I just can't help but take a dig at the worst genre uh -huh. that's out there. So you do think that there is like a best to worst kind of like uh, flow through the musical genre world? No, no, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to try to make that argument. Um, but you would put music, country music, at the bottom of the pile, huh? <laughs> for me, yeah, yeah, for me. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like country music, then you're trash too. In my opinion, but you know, <laughs> wow. what? that's, that's you know just what? me. That's just me. Fake friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Back to your question. I yeah. honestly was racking my brain to see if I had a definition myself because I've never actually thought of it. Sure. Um, what defines music? Should we look <clears> up <throat> a good dictionary definition while you're thinking? Yeah, maybe we should do that. I mean, I think um, that it is sounds that make sense. I don't know. Does that make sense? Sound that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, um, because there's generally an emotion that comes up with music, and you do talk about this in your article. Um, I don't know. It, you just hear like a song and it makes sense even if you don't like it 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 makes sense because you know it's a song i don't know I, that's a terrible way of defining what music is but well yeah no i i think that's, that's the best i've got that's a good uh description of what a song is um, yeah but music i think is a bit broader than a song but but you know when you hear music right that's that's just it. I, I'm not sure that we always do. Hmm. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, it, I mean, an awareness thing. I mean, unless you're actually thinking, oh, what I'm hearing right now is music. So, some people, you know, consider, like, the sounds of their city to be music to their ears, you know? Even though mm -hmm. it's just, like, the sound of traffic and machinery and people talking it's it's a sound you know in that time makes sense. that yeah ma makes sense um <laughs> gives you a feeling of <laughs> i don't know familiarity um i don't know uh -huh. what it is but but i don't I, 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 city chatter doesn't really make sense in the the sense that i'm thinking of what sense means anyway now we're getting really vague okay <laughs> okay um <laughs> hey that's okay <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but um, yeah, okay. I, I, I think well, your, your definition does work as well. Okay, uh, well, I actually did pull up the definition from Merriam-Webster. <clears throat> I can't talk. Uh, definition of music, the science or art of ordering tones or sounds in succession in combination or in temporal relationships to produce a composition having unity and continuity. Uh yeah. Hmm. 
Uh, there's also uh, another explanation, vocal, instrumental, or mechanical sounds having rhythm, melody, or harmony. Another uh, description is an agreeable sound, a euphony. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if I would go with the agreeable, um, because even in, quote, conventional music, there is plenty of room to have tension that mm -hmm. is intentionally unpleasing to the ear. Um, yeah. So well, look at how they use like music part, but... in horror movies. Right, like, exactly. That's not agreeable sounds right. at all. Right. <laughs> like, right. it, in fact, a lot of the times they don't even need to show um, the monster, if you will, because the music is enough. Like, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I feel like we covered that. What defines music? We don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, you can, uh, thanks for the question, but hopefully you can answer that for yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't I, know if we can is, say the user's name or not. It's a, a great not, question so. in that it, it does kind of make you think for yourself, what, what actually does music mean to me? Yeah. And, yeah, because uh, I had never thought of it. Yeah. Um, personally. So, maybe I need, um, more time to think it through, but... Off the top of my head, I have nothing. <laughs> um, okay. The second question is, do only humans create music? Uh, no, no. Um, I, I'm definitely among the crowd that considers, you know, birds to be singing. In addition to birds, um, I also think that uh, dogs are prolific in music um the howling of wolves um there's actually i i should share this link because it's one of my most favorite things that exists on the internet um pink floyd once made a live concert uh film if you will and in there they have a blues jam that involves a i believe it's like an irish wolfhound mm. and it's it's the band playing the blues and they have a dog howling along with them and it's just it makes so much sense it's one of the best <laughs> blues tunes that i've ever heard the mm. the dog understands the blues and he's singing it it's it's great <laughs> uh, so anyway yes animals can definitely make music okay not just humans animals also there's um i've i've seen i've seen plenty of of dogs also um uh playing the kick drum like like hitting the the kick drum in in rhythm in time to somebody either singing or playing guitar hmm. so some some dogs even have a sense of rhythm i gotta teach my dog that <laughs> <laughs> maybe she'll stop chewing things <laughs> <laughs> that she's not supposed to. <laughs> you want to tell us about your new puppy, by the way? I know this is kind of uh, going down a little rabbit trail, but I, I think it's it's worth mentioning. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I got a puppy. It's a. Uh, her name is Alita, and she's a half Aussie. We don't really know what the other half of her is. Um, <laughs> they think it's a lab. I personally see German Shepherd in her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I kind of um, see that too. Right? She's so cute, and she's so good, and I love her very, very much. Um, she's also Aww. really naughty, and it figures that <laughs> I got a really intelligent um, bratty dog. <laughs> <laughs> She, she knows that she is a bad bitch and uh, she gets what she wants. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it figures that I own her now. <laughs> and you definitely spoil her, right? Well, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't I know. Just, it kind of sounds like you do. I just coddle her when she needs it. <laughs> I feel bad that like, okay, so she is, I think she's coming up on eight weeks now and, um, we got her at about, yeah, eight weeks old and we got her at about six weeks old and she was, 
she's so nippy. She likes to nip everything because she's in that puppy stage where one, she gets puppy brain and like when she just gets excited, like her teeth are out, like she's just yeah, like yeah. everywhere. But then also she's a puppy because she explores the world with her mouth. So she nips like constantly. <laughs> <laughs> so we were watching um, the dog whisperer because like, you know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we were watching and Caesar was like, oh, most dogs shouldn't be like taken from their mothers before a specific like age. I don't remember what the age was, but it was definitely like above six weeks. And I just remember like she's laying at my feet. And I looked down, I'm like, oh, my God, you don't have oh. your mother. And so, like, I crawl on the ground next to her, and I'm, like, bawling my <laughs> eyes out. Alita just oh. honestly probably was like, why is she losing her mind? Is this lady okay? <laughs> like, why, God, did you leave her with me? <laughs> like, of all people. Um <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. But um, there are times where she's like the best kind of dog. And then she's literally like Carmen on South Park in the Dog Whisperer episode. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that episode. Ethan, I don't remember like, that one. No. Uh, so in that episode, it's like <laughs> one of my favorites. Carmen is so bad. His mother like hires like super nannies to come in and each super nanny that comes in, um, he ends up like traumatizing them and they like leave crying like they're broken. One of them ends up in a, um, an asylum and, and then finally the dog whisperer is called in and Caesar's like, don't look That's at him right. don't talk to him and That's like right. it's so funny and he's just like what the what the he's like mom <laughs> i'm right here it's so <laughs> hilarious but like she borders between like the sweetest dog to carmen on that episode that specific episode so cartman right <laughs> yeah cartman thank you <laughs> uh yeah I, I i do remember that one now that that was a great episode but mm -hmm. yeah nobody likes caesar he knows what he's doing. Yeah, for real. I was like, why don't I live in California, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure she doesn't nip. <laughs> Send her to the farm, Caesar's farm. <laughs> Not Dr. Phil's farm. Um, okay. All right. Uh, getting back to our topic of hand, I could probably yes. talk about Alita okay. all day, but there are more pressing matters. Um, here's another question. Why, where, why? Oh, <laughs> I can't read. There's four questions on this from this person. Um, what defines music? Do only humans create it? And why? Why do only humans create it? So, but you've kind of already like said that you don't believe that. Yeah, humans... I don't really agree with that. I don't agree with that premise. Yeah, exactly. I don't either. Um, where is the line if they don't? So if humans, Where's the line? Oh, if humans I see, I see. aren't uh, the only ones that create music, where is the line? Well, I think that then goes back to the definition of music. Mm. Um, if, if people can, I, I, I kind of, I guess I'll stick to my guns and say that to me, music is just sound in time. Okay. And um, with that, you know, you can say obviously that, you know, birds and dogs are capable of making music. And... Um, I don't know. I mean, you can you can take any sound and remix it, right? I mean, you can take a cat, you can take a horse, and you can put some uh, 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 auto tune on it and make a song, right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. You don't even need to put auto tune on it; just insert it into a song. Mm. Okay. Well, I hope that answered all of your questions. Um, I'm not going to include your username in the podcast <laughs> um but we'll actually post probably those answers on instagram as well and facebook um just to reiterate so anyways uh we'll get back to my questions they're not as uh profound i don't think <laughs> i just had i'm a, sure that they are I had let a good us old be time. the judge of that all right um do you ever let music decide your mood 
So say that you oh, come to wow. music and yeah, you. So uh, back to like what I was saying. Like there are times where I will turn on a specific like um, like I'll put on Doja Cat when I want to get hype. Um, I'll put there on like go. Hozier if I feel like I should be drinking wine and thinking deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put on like Beethoven and Mozart to study, which actually they're not really great study. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't think it's great um, study material or study backdrops. Um, sure. When I need to feel calm and like less stressed, I'll put on like lo-fi. Um, just like, like I will choose the music that I want to help with my mood. But have you ever mm -hmm. gone to music without any, like, any intention and just let the music fill you? I certainly hope so. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I can definitely, you know, accidentally have something just turn on and have my mood changed, for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think any good musician is able to do that to a person okay so um, how about you oh honestly i have never thought about it before today <laughs> well uh think about it now i mean like have you ever been uh i don't know for example like in a uh not the best mood maybe something's bothering you but then like a uh i don't know maybe a doja cat comes song comes on and <laughs> All of a sudden, unexpectedly, you're you're now uh, chipper. Mm, I don't think so. Generally, I think oh. <laughs> when I'm in a mood, I I let myself um, go through that mood. I don't know if I've ever She's used music healthy. to that's, alter it. That's probably a good thing. Sure. I don't know if it's a good thing. Or uh, not, how, but how like... about like the how about the uh, uh, the opposite, where uh, you're in a good mood and then something sad comes on and you're just overwhelmed by how sad it is oh that has definitely happened <laughs> sure yeah um yeah okay so i guess i do do that sometimes um yeah. i th again i think if, if the if you are able to relate to that song and it catches you by a surprise i mean you're gonna relate to it even if you weren't expecting to uh, expecting it yeah and then obviously you do also have to pay attention to it. You know, it can't just be on in the background and you're thinking about something else. You kind of have to pause and listen and let it do that. Hmm. So um, I wanted to ask you about your overall um, intention about writing this article. And sure. the specific thoughts that went into the title and... Um, yeah, what are your uh, thoughts on that? <laughs> um, I, I, this, this is just stuff that I've been thinking about for a couple of years, and my first crack at actually just putting these thoughts down on paper. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're questions that I'm asking myself. I don't necessarily think that I've arrived at any new and profound uh, 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 answers to these questions, but um, they're fun to think about. Um, and I don't, it's, it's also in a way just kind of a, a peek into the, the way my brain thinks. I'm just, I, I'm seeing a connection, a commonality between drugs, music, magic, God, evil, good. They're, they're all related in some way. And yeah. I'm just interested in that relationship between all these things. Hmm. So do you actually um, believe, um that music is a drug or were you following your train of thought with just things that you've been finding for yourself? I mean, kind of as, as I say in the article, it's, it's not exactly like a drug. It's not a physical thing that you ingest. Mm -hmm. Um, but it really does act the same way as a drug does. Hmm. And, and so I, I think that's kind of what I'm trying to say. These like music is a drug Music is magic. Music might be God. There, yeah. I don't. I, I think it, it was kind of just a attempt to to get your attention. Okay. Well, um, it definitely did. But 
<laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you about your definition of magic and how it correlates with um, music. Yes. Yeah, let me, let me put up the, the literal definition of magic here. Um, because I think to most people, you, when you say magic, you think, you know, pulling a rabbit out of a hat, sawing a person in half, and it's like, okay, these are, these are ridiculous illusions. Um, mm. Or even or, like you know, I mean, sorcery. Some people think of like folklore and yeah. Right, um, right. But, but it's ge- like the, the word magic is generally dismissed. Which, you know, mm. I think it's strange. Even, uh, like, religious people dismiss magic. Um, yeah. But here's the literal definition. The, the first definition that pops up. Um, the power of apparently influencing the course of events by using mysterious or supernatural forces. And so... I don't know, it kind of goes to say, like, if, if you think of magic that way, if you believe in God, then then you kind of have to believe in magic. It's it's supernatural influence. Mm-hmm. And, um... So, how do you think that uh, puts it on the same level with music? Because clearly, we can look at music, and we know how... Well, that's just it. We, we we don't know how or why it's doing what it's doing. We know that it does. We can, you know, make mm-hmm. a study of the brain and see what it's doing, but we we don't know why. Oh, okay. And, that makes sense. Um, I mean, in the same way, like you can you can watch a miracle happen, but but why or how did that happen? Yeah, it's kind of like you're at a loss to describe um, what it is doing. Well, no, I mean, you can, again, you can, you can, you can observe the effect that music has on a person. You can, you can watch them, you know, get their mood amplified. As, as I linked in the article, you can actually reduce seizures. Um, I, there, there's, there's just a long list of things that you can observe music do to a person. But, yeah. but the question is, why is it doing that? Hmm. And, and since we don't know, you know, it's, it's. I would say still a mystery. So um, magic, it's magical. Well, I I don't think I don't think that mystery necessarily means magic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I think that's kind of why I intro introduced the or not introduced but um, pointed out that for thousands of years, civilizations and and societies definitely saw music as as a magical thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I provided that, that example of David playing the lyre for Saul mm-hmm. to drive away evil spirits. I mean, that's that story is straight out of, out of a fairy tale book. Hmm. That's exactly the sort of thing that happens in, in your, your classic fairy tales. And it's, it's magic. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how they saw it. And I, I don't see any reason so far to, to doubt that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think it's reasonable. Yeah. And as far as we know, music has gone back to the beginning of humankind. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as far back as we can see, I think. Yeah. Uh, I know, I remember when we went to uh, Stonehenge, there's a theory about how Stonehenge was used uh, as a way to worship, but also the stones line up in a specific manner that it could have been used as an instrument. Um, do you remember mm. that at all? Yeah, the the stones are a specific type where they're um, I forget the term that they use for it, but basically, like if you were to throw a rock at it, it would ring. Yeah, it wouldn't thud. It would actually give a ring, like a xylophone would. Hmm. Um, and so yeah, they're 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 specifically like sonic stones. Yeah, that's so fascinating to me. Like I would love to throw a stone and and see what happens. Um, and like why too like the the mathematics that went behind setting up stonehenge alone like that's amazing yeah yeah i hesitate to bring this up because my i i'm barely even remembering any details about this but do you remember a long time ago you and i were once discussing um the possibility of um maybe it was the druids or ancient monks 
out in Europe somewhere were oh. using uh, like vibrations and, and humming collectively to uh, move large stones. Yes. Like, oh. what, wasn't that in some sort of um, folklore or, or mythology? I think it was actually on a Mysterious Universe podcast. Um, yeah, I, th I think I think it was something that you were telling me about. And, yes. Um, it, yeah, it, it involved some religious leaders chanting or humming yeah. and using sounds to, to move giant boulders. We should look that up because that would be really fascinating. I think it was actually in a book that mysterious universe was going over um if sure. we find that guys we'll post that up and maybe at some point we can go over it in the future too because it was really fascinating i just remember enough yeah. that yes they used sounds or uh instruments to like um create this um pattern that would actually move things and it, it yeah, made yeah. sense because, oh, I want to know what that story was. See, it's 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 not the, the the reason I bring that up. It's really not far from the current belief in in um, Hinduism and Buddhism, the the power of Om. I don't know if you're familiar with. This. Yeah, um, yeah, because they do that in let yoga. Me, let me get a more official definition because I'm gonna fuck it up here. Uh, Om is the ancient mantra that is used in Hinduism and Buddhism, among other faiths. In the Hindu tradition, the sound of the Om is said to contain the entire universe. Mm. It is the first sound from the beginning of time, and it, is also, it also encompasses the present and the future. So these, these religions understand the power of just this one sound. Yeah. And... Who knows? Maybe, uh, I, I again, I don't remember who exactly it was. Maybe it's druids, but these ancient folks also either use that that mantra, or maybe there's there's long lost mantras that had power in them as well. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's there's just something super magical and uh, I don't know supernatural about sound, yeah, and what you can do with it, yeah. It impacts us in, in ways that we just do not understand. Actually, a lot of uh, early religions talk about um, sounds, voices, and music. I mean, it, I, I guess an easy example would be, for me anyways, um, in the Bible, the first things are words that are spoken. Um, like, yes. if you believe in the creation, yes. it's sound that yes. permeates and creates um which god, is an god interesting... speaks he he uses sound to uh, to bring everything literally everything into existence yeah that's an interesting There's something kind of profound about that mm -hmm. now of course it's not like he uses a song but it is sound that you know is is quoted yeah, there yeah. um that's really interesting it's actually interesting how it kind of correlates with um ohm as yeah. well and how weird is it that you can use music to influence the growth of plants? This is so. True. It's not even just like uh, mammals that are affected by music, but but even you know, botany. Yeah, yeah. No, um, actually, I, my husband thinks I'm insane, but um, I talk to my plants every single day. <laughs> um, yeah. Because yeah. my grandma used to tell me like, oh, your your plants grow when you talk to them. And I was like, nah, Grandma, like, that's witchcraft. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's a little shady, Grandma. Um, but in, in actually where she comes from in Puerto Rico, um, <laughs> like, there's a lot of black magic there. So I honestly was like, without much knowledge, I was like, that's, that's, that's old lady stuff. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Um, the older that I've gotten, though, um, I actually heard about uh, studies that were done that sound actually does help plants grow, or it actually helps them not grow as well. If you play specific kinds of music, like music, right, um, right. plants don't grow or they don't like, 
uh, like that specific music, like metal um, and hard rock. Those right. are harder, whereas right. like they like the classical, like or like um, I would say more calming like music. But um, yeah. the I started like growing plants in my house, and uh, I don't know, out of boredom out of like being alone all day <laughs> like i just started talking to my plants and i actually noticed that they were doing they do so well when i talk to them like i like pet their leaves and like talk to i sound like an insane <laughs> person but it does help like when i don't um i mean there have been times where you, where you would leave for like i don't know overnight or something like that and you could tell like a definite difference between like me regularly conversating with my plants or like playing music for them here's another thing i actually do play music for my plants um <laughs> well, good. during the I'm, day like i i don't see how anybody could scoff at that anymore i mean it's it's not just uh superstitious people saying this i mean this this has actually been studied and confirmed yeah which is why i think the druids i'm drawing this back i'm going down a whole different hole um, <laughs> it's why I think the Druids, like, I want to know more about them. There's not enough information out there, but they actually had a lot of things right. Obviously not the burning of people and, like, killing. But the, what I want to ask you about, um, if we're considering that plants are conscious. I know this is, like, still staying. <laughs> um, you say that music is, um... It's value neutral. So how would that yes. work for a plant? Because would the plant be imparting its intention towards the music or would the music be imparting its intention toward the plant? Or would it not matter? Because if um, some plants... I'm sorry, can you, can you... Go ahead. If some plants, like... If they grow better with... I, I don't know, classical music versus if they right. were to listen to metal music and they, they don't right. grow. Um, would you say that the music is imparting something onto the plant? Or with it being value neutral, it shouldn't matter what kind of music it is playing if it is conscious. Or would the plant be so conscious that it it puts intention towards the music? I don't know how I'm saying well, this, yeah, but that's, like, that's does that make sense? That's an interesting question. Yeah, like, are, are, do... Are, are plants affected by values? I yes. Think yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, certainly seems like it. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Hmm. But where would the value With... come from for the plant? Where would the value come from? Yeah. Um, I mean, just, just the, the notion that music can be helpful to things or harmful to things. So the um, music would in, be in, not in the the fact in the fact that the 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 music is stunting the plant's growth or maybe even killing it in some cases. Mm -hmm. That's that's harming the plant, and so you could say that that is. Um, it's not good. It's bad. So you could say that in that case, music isn't value neutral. Well, no, no, the. Again, music itself, like just music, it is value neutral. It's it's what it's being what it's being used for. And so if you're if you're turning on metal for plants and it's it's killing them, then you could say that the plant would look at that kind of music as evil. It's killing me. It's tormenting my soul. Okay. Just a just a, a question I wanna throw out there. If I like if I liked metal, um yeah. And I wanted my plant to enjoy the same experience. I'm imparting good intentions with something with music towards my plant, but my plant died <laughs> or did not yeah, like the metal. Yeah. Would that mean that my intentionality? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Um, no, well, no, I, I don't think that your intent was evil, but but you know, mistakes are made. I mean, again, like going along with the music is a drug thing. Like it would be like mm -hmm. if I built up a certain tolerance for a certain potentially, uh, you know, fatal drug, and mm -hmm. I wanted a friend of mine, I wanted you to enjoy this drug with me, and so <laughs> I take it and you take it, but it it kills you. 
you know, I didn't mean any evil towards you. I, I just fucked up. <laughs> and so <laughs> the, 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 the drug, sounds the, like the, um, the, something I've the drug itself is value neutral. But <laughs> but the, the way you responded to it was, you know, not good. It's bad. So am I answering your question? Kind of. I mean, that explanation is really great, but I feel like I feel like I'm trying to strong you into saying that like music isn't always value neutral (laughs) because whose intention is fucking up the plant basically. Um, I, maybe you're misunderstanding what I mean by music is value neutral. Um, okay. I, I don't mean like a specific song is value neutral mm-hmm. it like what was the intent behind making it you know there's all sorts of questions to ask about specific songs i just mean like music as a thing music as okay. a thing is value neutral you can use it for good or you can use it for evil okay so actually that is the perfect way to jump into my next question i was actually going to ask excuse me i was actually going to ask you if um you believe that some artists can impart evil intent onto into their music to channel onto the audience, uh, the their audience. I'm I can't talk. <laughs> um, because you say that um, in your article, music can be used for torture. Yeah. So that would imply at some point that music could be made into a. Uh, an evil tool basically if you yeah will. yeah for sure um i i certainly think it could be done i'm just trying to think up an example and i'm coming up short mm. um so i know that a lot of the i think it was the 80s where there was the satanic panic happening a lot of um religious people thought that what their kids music was imparting towards them was like worship satan kill yourself like those kinds of things and there was actually a lot of like um channels on television like showing um like they would like play the song in reverse and they'd be like all hail satan yeah yeah yeah. it was like a really long shot actually like you didn't I didn't hear it personally. Many, many many different conspiracies about many different bands from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there was that whole satanic panic. And so I guess in my questioning, that would be a good example. Do you think those bands actually did mean ill intent on their audience? Or or was it just something that they were creating? I happen to not buy any of those conspiracies Um, i don't either maybe there's some that i'm just not aware of but i the Mm -hmm. the first one that comes to mind is is led zeppelin Mm. and when i listen to the 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 tracks backwards i i don't hear it like (laughs) where you want to hear these things if if you're reaching that far um here's here's what i'm thinking Here's here's an example of making music for evil. Um, the FBI at Waco mm. uh, compiled together a bunch of um, sounds that consisted of like animals being slaughtered, drilling, loud machinery, chanting. I think they threw in some metal in there. They they made a collage of just horrible sounds and then blasted it at the uh the folks in 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 the 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 home or the siege whatever you want to call it um that is a example of making music with you know ill intent for evil to harm somebody hmm i did not know about that is that actually true oh yes yes 100 percent hmm did you learn about that in that documentary? <laughs> well, I, I mean, to be clear, it's not a documentary. It is a dramatization of, of true events. Um, but yes, I, I actually did not know just about anything. I, I knew the general premise of what happened at Waco, but the, the specifics, I, I had no idea. Hmm. Do you know what I learned about documentaries recently? I, don't, I mean, maybe you know this. You probably do. I learned that documentaries... Um, if you look up their definition, they 
are um, closer in definition to opinion pieces rather than like um, factual pieces, which I thought was really interesting. Well, they definitely have that potential. I mean, everybody yeah. has an agenda when they make a documentary. It's just how honest are they being in their agenda? I think yes, there are perfectly yeah. honest documentaries, but of course there are many dishonest ones and misleading ones. That that's yeah. You know, there was you can't, something. You can't there was a documentary that we were. I can't remember what it was. Um, there was a documentary that we were interested in watching. My husband and I, and um, we looked up like I don't know um, a review on it. And they were like, just beware, this is definitely more opinion piece, but also be aware, PSS. Um, that, is it PSS or PPS? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's PPS. Okay, PPS. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> documentaries don't always have to be factual. And I was like, what? Like, no. Yeah. And we looked it up and we're like, oh, that's really interesting. Because I think a lot of people just go along with documentaries as like, oh, this is the real deal. They have to tell the truth, you know? Right. No, 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 no. There's absolutely no law that holds anybody to telling the truth when they make a film (laughs) of any kind. Um, Yeah. No, I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. I don't want to open this whole can of worms, but I don't know if you ever watched the quote documentary, uh, Leaving Neverland about michael jackson oh yeah actually i did watch bits and pieces about it um <laughs> again i bits don't want to get too far into it, it not but about i it, but i consider <laughs> that that film i'm not going to call it a documentary that was a pile of shit um I I have absolutely no idea to know if if the two bo- or the two men that were featured in the documentary are telling the truth. I have no way of knowing that. But a documentary mm-hmm. I think you at least present the alternate view. You don't have to go with it if you don't agree with it, but at least present it. In this uh I think it's like a 4-hour film. Um they never talk to anybody from the jackson family uh his lawyers nobody they they it's all prosecution and absolutely no defense um and to me if you're trying to if you're trying to condemn somebody of something at least make an effort to be just and fair which, which, you know, is kind of, it's supposed to be a model of our court system. You know, you, you, everybody <laughs> yeah, has okay. a day in trial. You have a defense lawyer. You have a chance to have your say. And these two guys decide to make this film or tell their story after Michael Jackson's dead, when he can't defend himself. And then the filmmakers don't talk to anybody who might stick up for him at all. And so, to, hmm. like, that's it's just, you can't ever go into a a court case with nothing but prosecution there has to be a defense and these filmmakers didn't even make an effort and so um again i have no idea if jackson did these things but like i i don't think anybody should watch this film and let that influence their opinion of michael jackson it's because it's not fair Anyway, I I know we had absolutely no (laughs) plan to talk about Michael Jackson, but oh my um, gosh, we're like I'm not. not I'll be honest. I'm not even. (laughs) I'm not even that big of a Michael Jackson fan. Like obviously, anytime Mm. Billie Jean comes on, I'm gonna dance. But like, I don't. Yeah, Billie Jean though. Come on. Listen to Michael Jackson. I don't. There have been many attempts to moonwalk (laughs) to Billie Jean. (laughs) (laughs) All failed attempts, in my opinion, but. Yes, on my yes. side, I have tried to moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go? think anyone will be as smooth as Michael Jackson. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, on the subject of dancing, actually, um, this was a question I wanted to ask later on. You say um, in your article, like, dancing, like, what the fuck is that? Um, yeah. And... I was thinking about it today. If music is magical in nature, 
right? That's that's what we're going along with so far, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, I follow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if music is magical in nature, dancing makes sense because, well, maybe it would make sense because it's like a spell almost. I'm sorry, it's a what now? It's like a spell. Oh, sure, sure. Because I know, like, when I hear music, I immediately want to dance. I don't know how to dance. <laughs> um, but I do start dancing, and generally it is to, um, not to the beat. I'm not on beat. I'm very white. <laughs> um. <laughs> your, your body, though, is just prompted to move. Yes, exactly. Um, and interpretive dance seems just like the most natural thing to me. Like watching yeah, interpretive yeah. dance, like it just amplifies the music. It amplifies like just every emotion I'm feeling and every emotion that I'm watching. Like yeah. interpretive dance makes sense to me. Um but we necessarily wouldn't have interpretive dance if we didn't have music. And so I was kind of like thinking about it. Um, like if we are continuing on with the thought pattern that music is magic, it would make sense why we dance because in its in a in a way it's it's a spell. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Are yeah? you familiar with <laughs> the ancient practice of trance dancing mm. i've actually heard about it i don't know much about it though um i don't know if anybody today knows how to do this but um as legend has it um you know ancient tribes would literally dance themselves into a trance they knew mm -hmm. a specific set of moves to just do for hours and hours and hours and eventually they would trip like they're on mushrooms or on LSD or something. They would, yeah. They, they would be able to see the spirit realm by dancing. Because of the, um, that was a part of the Native Americans like practices, correct? I I believe so. Um, the, yeah. the one I'm thinking of, I believe, comes from ancient Ireland. Um, mm. In fact, that that may have been the Druids as well doing that. But um, I would definitely believe it. I'm, it sounds like them, right? But anyway, yeah, yeah. That, that that perfectly goes along with your notion that that uh, dancing is is evidence of a spell. Yeah. Do you think with dancing for hours, um, the brain just hits so many endorphins that that's why they go into a trance, or well, is, yeah, do you, you really gotta... think it's more? You got to imagine it is doing something to the brain. I mean, you're, otherwise you're. Your whole existence is is based on your bank, brain chemistry, right? So mm -hmm. if you're going to hallucinate to where you're you're seeing fairies or, or spirits, then yeah, it's it's doing something. Um, mm -hmm. What exactly? I don't know what. I'm sure skeptics would say they're probably just dehydrating themselves to hallucinating. <laughs> and you know, maybe I actually right, have heard that theory. Yeah, yeah, and I, <laughs> I'm not going to argue. I'm sure that that could happen, but mm -hmm. maybe not. Hmm. Okay. I, I haven't heard of anybody dehydrating and seeing fairies, you know, these days. <laughs> that would be, uh, that'd be wild. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like that's good. Um, <laughs> I want to move on to my next question. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I swear I have ADD, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are great questions, by the way. Thanks. Thanks. I tried. I mean, I tried a little, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of fairies, though, dude, um, I want to talk about fairies at some point in a future like podcast because that is like my my thing. Like, I want to go into it. Yeah. Or write let's an do article it. about them. I don't know. I want to do sure. something about it because fairies, druids, folklore. Um, myths like that is my stuff like that is my my go-to like yeah. fun place i don't know how to describe it <laughs> i like it <laughs> butters your bread 
<laughs> yes, butters my buns. <laughs> that sounds very bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as we are. <laughs> Um, okay, my next question was, how and why does God manifest through music for you? Um, I guess because when I'm listening to music, I guess, is, is when I feel either call it the, the closest to God, the most spiritually touched. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just me letting emotions take over but i i don't believe so um again because we can't we or we have absolutely no explanation explanation i can't talk either no explanation for why <laughs> music is doing what it does to us uh, uh -huh. again i don't think it's that far-fetched to conclude that this just might be supernatural um yeah i know this is going to be you know a very controversial thing to say um but I don't mean this, but music is my religion. <laughs> um, if, 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 you know, people who believe in God in their own way, a lot of them, you know, have their story about how God touched them, God changed their life. Um, yeah. And I guess for, for me, the, my version of that is, is from music. Yeah. Well, at least you weren't TikTok touched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a subtle dig at all the TikTokers out there. Uh, or not I'm so subtle. I've honestly <laughs> just been thinking about that since you began your answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <sighs> no, that, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, that's that's why I wanted to ask the question, though. Like, um, Because I didn't want to ask you like what you thought God was or, you know, who you thought God was. like or Sure. You know what I mean? Those are yeah, very no, deep I, conversations. Yeah, I, I definitely don't have an answer to that. And again, I don't yeah. mean it when I say that music is my God, but at the same time... It's the closest <laughs> thing that you can do to experience it's, anything it's, like, like Like I say in the article, it's certainly the best evidence for me mm -hmm. that, that there's something okay. else going on, for sure. Hmm. Okay. Do you, uh, do, you, do you buy that? Do you think it's ridiculous? No, I, I actually do understand where you're coming from. Um, I don't think it's ridiculous. Um, I think I'd have to think about it a lot more. Mm -hmm. But um, it doesn't seem far-fetched. Well, thanks. <laughs> I am not TikTok touched. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> As soon as you started saying, like, I was touched by, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> like, don't say it. Don't say it. I have to say it. <laughs> um, all right. My next question was, you mentioned a dualistic universe. Um, can you actually, that's a really interesting theory um, to believe in a dualistic universe. Um, yeah. What are your just briefest of thoughts? Like, okay. What can you say the, about I'm, I'm glad you bring this up because there are actually several def, uh, different definitions of dualism. Not everybody yeah. means the same thing when you say dualism. I mean exactly why in, I wanted in, to ask it. Yeah, I, I kind of mean it in the yin-yang sense. In that okay. every, every good needs a bad. Every up needs a down. Every in needs an out. Maybe yeah. uh, the very nature of God works that way as well. Hmm. To experience pure Jane, uh, joy, not Jane. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jane. <laughs> to experience full joy. The um, purest of all, the Mary almost... Jane. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but um, <laughs> to experience. <laughs> That's where my mind went. <sighs> I love it. To experience pure joy, you almost have to understand what like heartache is or um, devastation, loss. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I, I get that. So how do you feel um, that music being value neutral fits into a dualistic universe? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, again, it's, it's uh, the idea that, like, 
you know, like a drug, you can use these things for good or for ill. Mm, okay. Um, you know, like LSD is a great example. You can you can literally use LSD to create Charles Manson, or you can use LSD to become enlightened, like uh, Duncan Trussell. I he probably wouldn't like it if I said that, but I consider him an enlightened in- individual. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can you can use it as a tool to to better yourself and to overcome issues we had a nice good long conversation with our friend josh and alan vital about how you can use drugs for good but then yeah you can you can certainly um use it to make other people or yourself a monster so Um, within a dualistic universe nothing starts out as truly good or bad it starts out as value neutral and can be turned to good or bad i'm looking i'm i'm literally visualizing a yin yang symbol and trying to figure out sure. where music would fit into that actual symbol. Or am I thinking about it in the wrong way? Good question. Um, imagine imagine music being the circle. Okay. And it contains, you know, the 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 the, the left side and the right side, the the white and the black. Mm-hmm. As well as, you know, the white dot in the black spot and the black spot in the white area. Mm-hmm. Um and and yeah, you know, from the good, evil can come forth, and from the evil, good can come forth, and the two complement each other, and they're constantly working together to uh, to create a uh, you know our reality. Okay. And you know you you can you can think of music in the the symbol itself as a whole. It's it's got a a, a good side to it and a bad side to it. Okay. I, I and I, I I probably shouldn't even use that kind of language. I I think the uh, uh, the Taoists don't quote me on this, but I actually I think they don't really believe in the notion of good and bad. Everything just is or isn't. Right. Right. I think. Um, I, I I'm not qualified in any way to speak about the Taoists, but I I seem to recall hearing or or reading that they um. They don't really, at their core, believe in good or evil. Everything just is. Um, again, like the the idea of yin yang, everything has an in, out, up, down, left, right. Um, call it positive or negative, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, happy, sad, but but everything just is, and I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a real peace that you can find. If, if you can come to that conclusion and, and maybe that's where they find their peace. Hmm. That almost seems like... Um, we should find a real Taoist to interview and ask these questions to. That would be actually really interesting. That almost seems um, that if things are just the way that they are, that, that seems like we don't have any self-will, if you will. No, I mean, I, I think that a Taoist is still going to encourage its people to live a good life and to find well-being in life. Um, but they, for example, probably wouldn't view death as a horrible thing. It's, you know, part of life. It just is. Death yeah. is just as birth is. That mm-hmm. sort of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and And I do think that a person could probably arrive at peace with with that sort of conclusion okay interesting um my next question is um this one's just kind of a funky one what do you think about um pop music creators as shamans (laughs) if you say musicians are shamans (laughs) what are your thoughts on pop music yes (laughs) i had to dig it Um, in a little (laughs) oh boy oh boy this you know i love you hate from maybe (laughs) Oh boy, you had to ask the hard-hitting questions here. Well, okay. In uh, my defense, in my defense, I really like pop music. I think it's fun. Yeah. I like yeah. to turn it on when I don't want to think about whatever. You're right. You know. Right. Um. So Here's, I okay. like it. Yeah. What uh, What else do you want to say about pop music before I take my turn? <laughs> <laughs> I like pop music. I think that it can help evoke a specific kind of emotion. I think it can hype you up. Um, I think it can help you feel, I think it can help you like work. So how I view emotions, I see emotions as, okay, say I'm feeling sad. I'm not going to try and 
cause myself harm by just being just telling myself be positive like cheer up buttercup like it's gonna be okay i personally don't like taking that um route in anything um yeah so for myself i just want to get through that emotion i want to let it travel down river so sometimes turning on a pop song that's about like a breakup even though i'm not going through a breakup like it's it's soothing like it feels healing in in one way or it's another relatable in that moment yes even though like when you play it back you're like eh, i could have written this or like this is so cheesy or like this is such a simple lyric like why am i drawn to this i think that the emotion that can be um taken away from it can be really beneficial but it is also yeah. like one of the most superficial like genres of music out there so but yeah like i wanted to hear your thoughts on um <laughs> if pop musicians could be shamans <laughs> yes yes um here's my feeling of, 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 of pop music um i lost my thought <laughs> <laughs> we're keeping that in <laughs> it's pop music in and of itself there's nothing wrong with i i happen to think that there are a number of good pop musicians um I think what what we're probably talking about though in general is is like top 40s pop. <clears throat> Excuse mm. me. Um I kind of see it as like candy. You know, there's a time and place for candy. Candy oh, is every easy. day not bad. all the time. You can you know, it's, candy is a meal replacement wrong. people. <laughs> There's nothing I, I, I don't have a problem and, and I, I will one hundred percent admit I love just to indulge in pop music, turn it on and dance. Yeah. There's nothing better than just dancing to good pop music. Mm -hmm. Um I love uh Prince, the nineteen seventy five. Mm -hmm. Um there's there's good pop music out there. I, I hesitate to call top forties this is where I'm going to get controversial. It doesn't <laughs> seem to be up to snuff in quality as as some deeper music and, and stuff that actually takes a little bit more attention um, to appreciate. Mm. Would you consider um, pop music the anarchist of uh, music? I do. No, 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 no. no I no. would. No. I. The anarchists? Yes. Explain, explain. What do you mean by that? Okay, most of the time it's, um, what do you call it? A uh, voice, what do they do to their voices? They change, like, they auto-tune. Auto -tune. Okay, auto-tune. So necessarily, you don't have to be a great musician. <laughs> You're literally just throwing up whatever you want to throw up. Um, well, here's, A lot of here's... the times... <laughs> I'm going to disagree with you there. Um, I do think that pop musicians are brilliant musicians. Some Lyrically, of them. yes, they're 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 rarely saying anything profound, but they're writing some really really catchy melodies, and that's really the strength of pop music is they're they're brilliant in in pleasing melodies. But think about um, this, and that's not an easy thing to do. But think about it, like their lyrics are so bad, they're good. Like, that's the anarchy about it. Like, they don't necessarily, s like, stick to a script about, like, being super deep or super um, poetic or, like, they don't really have a meaning to it. They just kind of do whatever they want to do to match the beat. And I think that's, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too deeply. Maybe I want to rub you the wrong way. I don't know, but, like... <laughs> I wanted to see what your well, thoughts were if they were the anarchists of uh, music, the in the music industry. Well, I, I guess maybe we're just thinking or using anarchy in different ways. Okay. Like, I'm thinking like uh, causing an uprising chaos mm -hmm. out of, uh, you know, just every man for himself type yep. attitude. Um, is that what you mean as well? I'm thinking of just chaos. <laughs> I think the anarchist huh. at the end of the day wants or creates chaos. And I think that's what pop music does. <laughs> huh. I don't know. Maybe that's I'm thinking too yeah. deeply I've, about I've, it. I've, 
I've never thought of pop music as being chaotic. I mean, it's but. just like they don't have, like, you're right. It does sound sweet like sugar a lot of the times. Like, it's candy. It's not something that's going to stick around. Yeah, they, it's not they super all nutritious. Also, I would say they, they've all got a, the same formula as well. Yeah. There's, I, there's actually been, like, many, you know, videos and, and lectures given about, like, the, the it's not the magic, but, the, like, the, the tried and true equation to writing a top 40s hit. Yeah, but that's why I would almost say that it's anarchy. They're not trying to stand out from the crowd. They're just doing whatever they want to do. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I generally reserve that for rock and roll, man. Rock and roll is all about anarchy. Uh-huh, but rock and but, roll but has not a formula. But within the confines of, of, of music, rock and roll is, is overthrow the man overthrow the government mm -hmm. talk shit about about the man but not, not necessarily like music structure itself but within rock and roll there's generally like the music is very good it's very catchy um and then the lyrics behind it deep they normally have several like there's normally several layers to a song there's right. different meanings right. to a song um like rock and roll is i would argue is the I would argue that they're the people that perform rock and roll. They're the poets of the music industry. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I would agree with you too. <laughs> um, but I know a lot of people would get upset about that. Yeah. But, I mean, that's why I think I, I don't see rock and roll as anarchy or anarchist. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Um, my actual last question, unless I think of anything else along the way, is at the conclusion of your article, you say that there could potentially be a mathematical formula to explain music. Have you ever considered the possibility that math isn't boring? <laughs> that maybe math is the exhibit A for God or reality and music is its creation? Yes, yes, 100%. Okay. Um, in fact, Eric Weinstein recently announced that he has a mathematical explanation for, um, you know, the very fabric of, of, of our reality. Mm. Um, and so I, I do kind of, in a strong way, think that reality is, is itself is constructed out of math. Mm. Um, but... I, I don't know quite enough to comment about this either. Like, if you ask me for any sort of explanation, I, I, I won't come up 100% short. But um, from what I understand, there's many different magical things inside of mathematics. Mm -hmm. um, there are what are known as, literally, uh, magic equations that yeah. people have discovered. Um, and so I... I strongly believe that that math and music are related i don't know exactly how but they definitely are related yeah why do you almost think that it's boring to have um math explain away music oh just just to say that like oh music is lifting your spirits because a plus b plus c equals c or i'm sorry a <laughs> equals d okay um that that to me like to, if you were to just put it on paper in numbers like you're you're reacting this way to rock and roll because this yeah then i i would say that just seems a little bit less boring than it's magic it's a spell that, that but seems isn't that how spells work by i don't know throwing in no 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 if, like if we're going along with the theory that reality itself is constructed out of mathematics then you know magic is part of reality and so maybe magic is mathematical Exactly. Who knows? Like, if you think about it, uh, I don't know, like, looking at a cheesy, like, movie with witches in it, they're always like, one Hogwarts, uh, <laughs> three human <laughs> yes, child yes. eyeballs, and it all goes into the <laughs> cauldron, and, um, like, you get the, the desired potion afterwards when you combine all of those yeah, specific yeah. ingredients in a specific way. 
Um, yeah. That to me is mathematics, but it ends up being magic. Does that make sense? Sure. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I see what you're saying. May, maybe. Yeah. Okay. You pointed a flaw in my paper at the very end. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a flaw. I was just wondering what your thoughts were. Like, what if math is magic? What if math is the explanation for yeah, everything? Yeah, I, I guess, okay. Maybe and what's I, wrong with I math? I still would be just a little bit disappointed if somebody were to email me an <laughs> equation for explaining why music does what it does. I, yeah. I still think I would be a little bit let down. Mm. I don't yeah, know. I, I guess I'll admit it. I, I have a bias. I, I want to believe that magic is real. Yeah. Well, I, me silly, but I, yeah, I'm true. not saying that magic isn't real. I'm saying that maybe magic is also a part of mathematics. Yeah, yeah, no, that's I like I said, I agree with that. That's that's certainly true. Hmm. Yep, I, I I would say I didn't think about that when I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great article, and I I honestly was really excited to interview you about it i i thought my no questions thanks. were really dumb so i'm glad you took that in stride and no they were they were great okay <laughs> hopefully the audience thinks so um but yeah like i was really excited to interview you for this article specifically just because well, i know that we had talked about it before you even published it and i was trying to tell you like hey like more range of emotions would be cool um, I guess anyone that hasn't yeah, no, heard that article, I, that argument, wouldn't understand what we were talking about. But um, I'm yeah. going to give you uh, a, a shout out here because, uh, yeah, I, I had Mariah read it for me before we published it. And I would say she cleaned it up for me. There were a few things that were not exactly uh, keeping a consistent thought in, in line. And so she, she helped me clean it up and make it a little bit more coherent. So thank you for doing that for me. Uh. And um, one of these days, uh, by the way, everybody, uh, <clears throat> check out Mariah's uh, article as well about um, being unique. I found it a very compelling argument. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe we can get into one of these times. But um, maybe it's excellent, and everybody should check that out as well. I think I'm too embarrassed to actually have a sit down about it well you shouldn't be you shouldn't uh, be <laughs> you have some some good things to say mm, thanks thanks um with that in mind guys we are actually um broadening our horizons here at notion club and we are actually going to continue publishing articles when we see fit um so definitely keep on the lookout for that and um I think it'll be really fun. I think it'll like um, add some depth to like what we're doing with our podcast as well. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, and I think it's um, I think it's definitely unique to uh, what we're trying to do here at Notion Club as well. We're not just trying to have a a podcast reviews or something like that. We're actually just trying to talk about thoughts and think about things yeah. i don't know <laughs> think about things that's that's great <laughs> uh, there's the also, value of being unique right yeah 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 <laughs> um there's also another podcast out there with our title um, yeah somebody somebody totally stole from us <laughs> um yeah i don't know how to think about that because, like, obviously we got the the title from J.R.R. Tolkien's, um, like, Fictionary Literary Group. Um, it was, like, based off of the Inklings. But I didn't, I thought it was so unique at the time that I was, like, cool. Like, I like the idea behind it. I like that there is, that it was created essentially by J.R.R. Tolkien, who we both love. And... I definitely didn't think anyone else would ever, like, use the title. <laughs> but now there is also another podcast out there with the Notion Club. So that'll be really interesting to see how it goes, I guess. It will. It will. But I think it's two guys talking about literally J.R. Token. I haven't listened to it, but I'm pretty sure that's 
Yeah, I mean, they definitely have a reason to be using the name. It's not. They like, did. Yeah. It's not unrelated. They're they're specifically doing what Tolkien was doing, so it makes sense. I'm yeah. Not gonna <laughs> deny that. But if no, I don't. I wouldn't say that. I would say we're doing more. Um, <laughs> I would argue that we are closer in line with what J.R.R. Tolkien was creating with Notion Club than they are because it was a it was based off of the Inklings, which is which was like a literary group. They all got these writers got together, and this was inclusive of C.S. Lewis and a few others where they would get together, share their writings, and then discuss those writings, which is what we're doing. Like, we're discussing our thoughts and what we, like, generally write or think about. I would say that we are closer in definition to what the Notion Club was originally created of, created for, I don't know what I'm saying, than what they're doing. They're just talking about J.R.R. Token's works, from what I've gathered. Oh, I thought maybe I'm thinking of something else, but I thought they were also writing stories as well. I hope not. God, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> music, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> did you see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm using music's name in vain. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i guess that's that's all my notions for today all my thoughts <laughs> <laughs> i think that does it for me as well let's end uh, it here i'm having such a great time but yeah i think it's time to go <laughs> <laughs> sounds good i'm definitely Peace out, getting bitches. slap happy bye guys <laughs>